Where's the future? At the present, the future is in the hands of the death bringers. It's with the dollar bill. It's with the people who would rather shoot their way in. It's with the child molester, the wife beater, the bomb creator, the Antarctica worshiper. The future is with the New York Times Public Relations Bureau, the executive programmers of ABC, CBS, and NBC. It's with the international global producers of idiot items. It's with the AMA and its cheaper to die plan. It's with the American Bar Association and its exclusive gentlemen's club. It's with the advertising firms in every city in the world. They'll turn you into a balance sheet, into a Technicolor ad for Bloomingdale's if you look hard enough and you will see that we have been taught not to do otherwise. Our future is in the claws of others unlike ourselves. We see the oddities of life made normal through expert packaging and interpretation. We see such statements as I ain't left nothing in Africa, written by black people appearing in such conspicuous places as opposite editorial pages in major newspapers. The legitimacy of the illegitimate, they are experts available to us for everything from blowing your nose to fitting your wig. We get experts in the black community by the ton, and they seem to be preoccupied with offering programs that are designed to dull our senses and make white our minds. There will be no death factories, hissing gas ovens, horror boxes, or overloaded ships this time. The enemy has grown too sufficient and too advanced for that. The real measure of technology is an efficient, swift, clean, and massive way to kill scientific innovation of the 21st century. And death seems to hang over the heads of people of color, especially black men. And we seem to have learned to live with it like domesticated cats and dogs. We seem to find the cliche that the key to slavery is to keep the enslaved from thinking about their condition or their future and focus their mind on false eyelashes, Cadillacs, dishwashers, the latest hair softener, cocaine, break dancing, pop dancing, and you name it, we claim it. We have become the ultimate consumer. Wouldn't it be terrible if our future was left in the hands of individuals who would sell their mother for the smallest white promise if they knew who their mothers were? Where's our future? It's in our hands. Good evening. I hope you found those words entertaining, but more importantly, I hope they were thought-provoking for some of our young people. The, the words I shared with you came from a book by Haki Marabute entitled The Decision is to Fight. And I think what he was trying to say in those passages that we shared is that things in this country and for people of color and poor folks in general are getting pretty tough and there's a decision that we have to make and that decision ought to be made around information that is correct information that causes us to ask the correct questions. But nonetheless, I hope that you will enjoy the show that we have in store for you tonight so I want you to get whatever that is you need out of the kitchen and out the icebox so that we can get right into some special we have for you this evening. As you remember, on last week we promised you highlights of the Black Arts Festival and we have just that. But before we get into the Black Arts Festival, we want to share with you some footage that we shot uh, surrounding a voter registration effort that's going on here in Peoria. As most of you know, October 6th is the last day to register to vote. And it is very important that all of us have our registration papers in order and be prepared to participate in the upcoming November election, for that is a very important election, 
uh, where many decisions are going to be made that affect us. As far as highlights from the Black Arts Festival, we're going to have coming up, from what I understand, um, some dance excerpts uh, featuring Street Freaks, The State of Shock, and some other groups that have been kind of controversial and have brought some discussion up, and we're going to get into that next week. Uh, we're also going to have Gail Thomas with us at the Gail Thomas Quintet, um, Jonathan Johnson, who has did just a fantastic job at the festival, and uh, last but certainly not least, Microwave. So stay tuned, don't go nowhere, we'll be right back. And now, an important message from former Peoria Mayor Richard Carver on his Captions Classic Edition. I've traveled to many countries of the world. I've seen people live under almost every condition a person can describe. Whether it's the rice paddies in mainland China, or the severe type of living conditions that people have in the Eastern Bloc countries behind the Iron Curtain. And one thing comes through loud and clear, no matter where you go, that in the United States of America, we have a system, if it works, it can work for everyone. But it's only going to work for you if you become a part of that system. And it means that you've got to vote. You've got to support your candidate. And the way to support your candidate is first to register and then to show up at the polls. I don't care how you support whomever it happens to be, but they need your vote. And that's where it all begins. And you know, from my perspective, I have to speak out in favor of not just thinking about voting and thinking about registering, but more importantly, thinking about for whom you vote as well. So register, vote, and think about who your candidate is, what their promises are, what their record is, and then try to vote as intelligently as you can for your future and our country's future.
My name is Andre Bohannon. Some of you may know me. I'm Director of Human Resources down at City Hall here in Peoria, Illinois. I'm hoping that each of you within the sound of my voice who may be 18 years of age and older will first of all be sure to register and second of all please vote in our coming up elections. Whether it's City Hall, or School District, Springfield, State Legislature, the U.S. Congress or the White House, Believe me, my friends, your vote can and will make a difference. For too many years, we as blacks and also females never had the privilege to even be able to vote. Today, we not only have that privilege, but we have a responsibility to exercise that privilege. In order to do so, you first of all have to register. So I'm asking each of you out there today, if you haven't already registered, please do so. Give a damn. Register. Make your vote count. Thank you. Hello, I'm Phil Carlson, president of the Peoria Area Chamber of Commerce. Freedom is a commodity that we as Americans have like no other people in the world. Molding and shaping that freedom so that all of us have it equally, in fact keeping that freedom, depends upon all of us exercising one basic freedom the freedom to vote. I'm shocked by the number of people who aren't even registered to vote. Please take the time today to register. Thank you. We have a friend stopped in the studio and we're gonna chat just for a minute. Glad you were able to, to stop in and chat with us today. You know, we've been talking about voter registration and I'm gonna ask you, are you registered to vote? No, I'm not. You say you're not? No. You mind telling me why you've not bothered to register before? Well, I just, I never felt that my vote was important. And I just never bothered to vote because I never thought that there would be a black president. So um, the white man doesn't want the country to be run by a black man. So I never felt that he would be president. That's why I never bothered to vote. Would you reconsider that and register now for the November election? Yes, I would. Why would you be willing to get registered and get involved in politics for the November election? Well, now I feel that I'm more politically motivated, and I think my vote would count because I see what Reaganomics is doing to the country. There's no jobs or anything, so I feel that my vote would count now. Okay, I appreciate that, and we're going to arrange for you to get with the deputy registrar and get your registration papers in order. Thanks and good luck. Thank you. Okay, as we promised, we're going to go right into the Street Freaks, who were our first dance act up at the Black Arts Festival. Hey! 
Another round of applause for the Brick City Dancers. Give them a hand, y'all.
Are you gonna shake it to the ground? Dance! Yeah. And can you smirk? Yeah. And can you jit? Yeah. Now scream!
Since he went away, you know the blues walked in and met me. And if he stays away, I'm sure old rocking chair's gonna get me. Now all I do is pray the Lord above, he's gonna let me. Son, once more can go on. Everything I have is gone. Stormy weather, oh baby. Since my man and me, we ain't together. Here to tell you all. It's raining all the time. It keeps raining all the time. Keeps raining. Gail Thomas Quintet. Thank you. 
can show
another round of applause for Jonathan Johnson, superstar. <laughs> My name is Josephine Collier, and I'm the Employment Manager for the City of Peoria. I'm here today to announce that the Board of Fire and Police Commissioners for the City of Peoria has begun the recruitment process for persons who are interested in becoming firefighters for the city. To become a firefighter, a person must go through a series of pre-employment steps and must meet certain qualifications as set by the State of Illinois. Persons who are successful in meeting all of the qualifications and successful in going through all of the pre-employment steps, which does include some tests, will be placed on a list for persons who will be hired into the, fire, into the Peoria Fire Department. I'd like to take a few minutes to tell you some of the qualifications for persons who would become firefighters. First of all, you have to be 18 years of age and not yet 35 years old by an orientation date. There will be an orientation date and that will be held on Saturday, September 29, 1984 at 9 o'clock a.m. at Manuel High School in Peoria. In terms of education, you must be a high school graduate. A GED is acceptable. Applicants must meet minimum standards for vision and hearing. They cannot be colorblind. You must have a valid driver's license. You must be a U.S. citizen. You don't have to live in Peoria until the time that you are hired and have successfully completed a probationary period. Some of the tests which are involved is that of a physical qualification test, a written exam, and an oral exam, which is more like an interview. Prior to hire, persons will also have to take some additional tests, such as a polygraph, a medical exam, psychological exam, and a background investigation. If you're interested in becoming a firefighter, you can make application at the city's personnel office, which is in room 203 of City Hall. This is 419 Fulton Street in Peoria. <laughs> Thank you.